Hi, very good morning, folks. Welcome to our preview today. It's Saturday, the 3rd of December. There's a double header today. We've got racing in Joburg. We've got the big meeting down in Cape Town, featuring the Cape Phillies, Guineas, and, of course, the Greenpoint Stakes. Now, Neil Andrews will concentrate on giving something for Cape Town viewers a bit later on. I know that he's studied the Cape Town card. And uh, Lyle Cooper has had a good look at the Turfentown card. How are you going, Lyle? Nice to have you back on the show on Saturday. Yeah, it's good to be back with you, Nico. I see that the team's had a very good week again. Um, Absolutely. You know, yesterday, yesterday, a very good day. Um, the one day before. Um, Tuesday, we had... If we just put all our money down on Tuesday, Nico, we honestly could retire. Well, that's what you said on Thursday, I think. You said that that was the case on Tuesday. It was one of those yeah. days where everything just fell into place. But it is... Nico, you, can, that... you can just help me out. You know, yeah. I know, I know that um, number three, you'll correct me on the name, but... That race, I, I, I'm still dreaming about that race because we had 114 merit rating. We had a 51, yeah. a couple of 80s, and an 82. And That's they right. ran the wrong, wrong way around. I'm still, yeah. I'm still in shock. Yeah. yeah um, well, the question, Mark, is whether they, um, you know, I, I know that the NHRA have come out with these uh, uh, state, I'm just going to say statements. I'd, I'd rather not use an adjective to describe the statements. But statements <laughs> saying, in a couple of last press releases, don't pay much attention to the ratings because they don't mean much. Oh, have, you yeah. seen that? have you seen that? No, I haven't seen that. Yeah, they're saying, comment. well, they're giving these ratings, these handicapped, these new merit ratings, but don't don't pay much attention to them because they don't mean much. So. But but a, 50, a 51 beating 114 by four lengths. Yeah. No, um, that, is, in that, that in itself is, is yeah, yeah, it's very hard. 37, 37 kilograms <laughs> out. Come yeah. on. And that was because anyway, that was a banker. I'm sulking because that was our banker. Yeah. Even if was, it didn't win, it should have run in the top three. Yeah. And it missed the placings as well. I think a lot of other place. I think a lot of other podcasts are licking their wounds after that. But there was no reason yeah. not to have a go yesterday. Um, yeah. and um, we certainly had a good day yesterday. Now the reason why I'm wearing this cap yes. is because of the Tell fantastic us. victory by Cameroon. We might not be Cameroon, but the it, the, the fact remains that an African team yeah. has beaten Wonderful. Brazil at the World Cup. Wonderful. And it was uh, excellent. we can all celebrate that. Uh, uh, how's the results, Nico? My goodness. Well, I, I'll tell you who is retiring are the bookmakers. The bookmakers are retiring yeah. from all the soccer money, which is another reason, yeah. folks, why horse racing offers you that much more of a betting opportunity. Now, I know Ooh. soccer's only win, lose, and draw. But form, if you go on form in soccer, you'll go st stick yourself right out. That's yeah, they would have. You'll stick yourself been right out. Terrible. The bookmakers are retiring yeah. on, on the World Cup 2022. Yeah. In the, you know, so, you know what my brother, my, what my brother does, Nick. He always takes the underdog, so you can imagine what World Cup he's at. Yeah, he's had a fantastic World Cup. But yeah, that's my point: yeah. is that you, if you go on form with humans, you'll stick yourself out. Yeah, yeah. hundred percent. Rely on the ponies, rather. Anyway, yeah. Let's talk yeah. about today. The weather looks good. Okay, there's a thirty yeah. percent chance of thunderstorms today, Alal. But both you and I are working at Turf and Dance. So I'll look forward to seeing you there a bit later on. Um, as at seven minutes past eight this morning, um, the following is true. The penetrometer 21, going good. They've had 11 and a half millimeters of rain at Turfontaine in the last week and 39 millimeters of irrigation. So they've had quite a bit of water on the track, but the going is good. And uh, Apprentice Siyanda Sasebo, who has ridden so well this week and who has oh. certainly come on in leaps and bounds, is not riding. He's been medically indisposed which means that he'll be replaced. I'll give you those jockey replacements as we go through it. But um, we've natted enough. Let's get on with the, the show. Let's see what Lyle likes today. I'm going to bring up the betting for the first of the day. Nine races carded. And the first is fairly early, Lyle. I know you'll be getting there early. Yeah. That first race off at yeah. 11.50. It is a maiden plate for fillies and mares over a 1,400-meter trip. And uh, here's the betting. Um, any insights to the first that you can share with us? Well, um, two things. There, there, there are at least three or four races here, Nico, that, with all due respect, are rather weak today. So it's um, tricky, but we can find some value. The second thing is Siandas or Sibo not riding has thrown me a curveball. Absolutely. So as we, go, yeah, yeah. as we go through this, we might just need to relook at one or two of my selections. That's a real worry for me. Yeah. So yeah, let's start off with race number one. Um, very weak, Nico. So green bubbles for me, probably the right one. Gabriel Peterson rides well. I mean, his family, but uh, he is riding well. Stu mm. Pettigrew's in good form. 
it's it's not strong form, but of all the horses in the race, I looked at all the form lines. I think Green Bubbles is the horse to beat. Um, number six, Queen Britannia. That last run was okay. Um, just behind number four, Aunt, Aunt uh, Pity Pat. So obviously three, six, and four. And then big respect for, look right at the bottom, number 11, Silver Hills, daughter of Silvano, um, Rachel Vinica for Sean Terry. Sean did say should need the experience, but will not take a lot of winning. The mayor did win over a lot further, 16 plus. So 14 yes. won't be a problem. Nico, I'm going to go three, six, four, and watch this number 11 very closely. Yeah, I think the 11 needs a trip, um, whether or not 14. I do too. I think, I think it needs further. It, it, that uh, mayor's family goes over a lot further. But sure. um, respect the money for it. So there's money for Silver Hills from three to one into five to two. The Terry Stable hitting their straps at the moment. And um, as you know, Lyle, with my engagement yesterday in the Eastern Cape, I haven't looked at the cards. I'm purely reliant on yourself. I can tell you that MK Cachetti is riding number 10, yeah, Royal Green Light, who's also got blinkers on. So only two and a half off the back of that instead of four. Nine Red Maple has a tongue tie, as does number eight, Casino Gale, have a tongue tie. Uh, those are the changes in the first year. I don't like the first. What I can tell you is that if, if it were me, I'd be expecting improvement from the eight Casino Gale in some shape or form. Why? Because there was a bit of natter about it last time out. It's not drawn the best, but watch out if there is any any improvement okay. there from the eight. Well, thank you. Let's let's put it in because it's not easy this way. It's yeah. not, it's not Just watch. straightforward at all. You know, I've heard, uh, heard a whisper or two about it last time out, but um, okay. let's move on to the second race, which is the start of the bipod. Now, this is a novice handicap over 1,600 metres. You could scratch number six, Global Breeze is out, and that's the change there. And also number two, Otto Lycan, um, no blinkers. Right, Celestial City is the 7 million rand uh, horse that won its debut. It's 5 to 10 today to win again, to make it 2 out of 2. Rachel Benneker rides with uh, just 54.5 kilos on its back. 4 to 1, High Moon. 6 to 1, Otto Lycan, number 2. How are you going? Well, first, you know, of course, Golden Duck Hat's running. So the, um, the the boys, are the two brothers are running on the same ah. day, which is quite lucky. Um, not for me at that price, Nico. Celestial City, I know who he is. I know how he won on debut. I'm going to be taking him on with all of one, two, and three. Otto Lakin, nice, uh, strong field last time. High Moon, so consistent. And Tabby Cat. I think any one of those can win. I'm going two, three, four, one. Okay, so you, you, you're saying the favourites, no five to ten chance. Not for, not for Lyle Cooper. Not at five to ten, no, Nico, no. It could win, but... Yeah, some hard knockers. It hasn't taken hard knockers. It's got up to win last time, but this is a this is a different class now. Let's see how he goes. Okay. Yeah, I'm. Um, I tend to agree with you there that I don't. I don't think this is a five to ten chance. Um, people, mm -hmm. I haven't looked at the form closely enough, but I, I can't see it why it's being a five to ten shot. Interesting. Uh, the two, um, the blinkers mm -hmm. have come off that. Now I know yes. that uh, Tyrone Zaki watched the Dingons with me. Um. And he had this horse uh, behind Union Square. It ran nine lengths behind the Dingons. I'm expecting this to do something today. I know that yeah. they've taken the blinkers off, but I'm expecting number two to go, to go really close there. And Nico, just to mention, Otto Lakin had horses like Meridius and Unzen behind him last time. So let's still yeah. he's got nothing like that behind him yet. So I, I probably would lean towards number two, Otto Lakin. Okay. I agree. Okay, let's uh, look at uh, race number two, which is the start of the bipods. And as we move on to the third race, now the start of the PA, we have done a place accumulator combined effort between Lyle and myself for our Take a Bet show. I don't know if you saw, but I did send a note yesterday. Our 48 rand place accumulator yesterday yes. yielded a return of 1,628 hmm. rand 80, which is a profit That's of 1,293% percent If anyone followed us yesterday, let's certainly be having Excellent. a little bit of Christmas money to go shopping today. Right. Well done. Let's go to the That's third race. Um, Scratch number two, Fiddler on the Cliffs is out. And uh, number seven, Free Movement has blinkers and a pressure halter. Compression mask on number nine, Tiger in red. And Scratch, uh, as I mentioned, was the two. Um, your feelings here, I see the money is pouring onto this horse fast duty for Stu Pettigrew and Pillar Sunday and Corley from five to one to the three to one. That looks to be where the money is. 
Yeah, it's got to have a chance. Nico, this was a 280,000 Rand buy. Oh, this race is not strong again, Nico. So, wow, I'm going to start off with number one. Give me royalty. Pierre Stratum, Shailen Naidu, not the greatest maiden having the 25th run, but I thought with Pierre aboard today, it could be the day for Gimme Royalty. Don't mind the price at five to one. Number five, Bright Blue Sky. The Aziz have got a very high straight um, place rate, by the way, Turpentine, but he's quite well held by number one. After saying that, that was the debut of number five, Bright Blue Sky. Um, that could be an improver. Number six, Fast Duty, of course. Um, not, not the worst debut in the world. That'll improve. And then number 10, LMB, so the daughter of Pomodora. This is the half sister to Paisley Park. Um, yeah, the mayor was well with, of course, um, yeah, Sean Terry, 54 and a half kilograms on debut. That could be our winner in this race because I don't like this race. But besides the first timer, for me, one, five, six, and even a little bit of number three. Don't like this race again, Nick. Yeah, not the easiest of uh, legs to get through the PA in. Uh, no. Just quickly, the 10 is LMB, and it, it, oh, it, thank you. the initials of Lance Michael Bookmakers. Oh. LMB, Lance Michael Lovely. Bookmakers, is the reason yeah. that is called that. I, I'm, I'm presuming it's called that because of Lance Michael, who's a part owner. So um, yeah, um, I just want to go to this horse, Bright Blue Sky, which caught my eye. Uh, Diego yes. Gaber rides it. I thought that last run from not the best of draws wasn't bad. I'm mm. yep. looking very closely at that to go close here. Uh, Bright Blue Sky. Okay. I'm happy that you put it in the PA numbers. Um, but like you, although there's money for fast duty, um, it ran at 66 to 1 on debut. It wasn't fancy. Maybe it's improved at home, but there is money it's from a punting stable, so it's well respected uh, where that yep. comes from. Okay, yep. move Love on you. to the fourth race at 25 to 2. It's a maiden plate over the 1400 meters. Scratch number six, which I expected to be right there. Fog bank, but it's not running today. Yep. That's out. Number three, Black Lightning as a pressure halter. Number seven, Vitellius has blinkers. What can you tell us here? Not much, Nico. Again, very weak maiden. Number eight, we've got tonight Marco von Innsburg, Roy Magna. I think there's improvement to come. There were two winners on that debut run and then running behind the Munchkin, etc. That wasn't the worst run. Now going up to 14, probably the first selection, but not confident. Number one, Cornello, uh, very exposed again for Shailen Naidu. But uh, Shailen's actually been doing okay the last few weeks. He hasn't been doing bad. Cornello can do well. Yeah. And Caden Brewer. I must just mention quickly Caden Brewer again, okay? He's got a very high percentage strike rate at Turpentine, does Caden Brewer. Oh, if you actually go to the front of the book. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Cornello, I think, is alive and people might ignore it in the betting. Uh, number three, Black Lightning. But we must mention those last two were work rights. Was beaten by number one, Cornello, in one of them. And then horses like number four, uh, Cam Lee Court, who was, there was money on debut for this one. And there have been four winners. So the big improver might be the four horse. And then at the bottom, number nine. So oh, eight and one, uh, uh, inverted commas, the best form in the race, followed by three, nine, and four. Okay, so, uh, now I'm in agreement with you here on one horse. And that mm. is we've got tonight. Yep. And we've been for this before, but the reason is because of the upgrade in distance. And I'm just going yep. to quickly tell you another quick uh, story about it. Um, yesterday afternoon, obviously, I travel with the riders and that. And yes. uh, I got a little bit of smidgen, if I can call it, of confidence from the rider Raymond Danielson, who's written oh, the first two times, saying this source needs this trip and further. Lovely. So we're all on we've got tonight for John Finlayson. Well, then that, that that helps a lot. Maybe that that'll just be the right one in this field. In I up. I think so. And um, therefore we're in, in we're into that in a big way. Race four. Good. Okay, yeah. race five. Let's go to that. It's a 10 past two. It's a merit rated 96 handicap. It's a thousand meters up the straight. I can tell you that Retallic is out. Scratched is Retallic. I'm just waiting for this uh, betting to update. Scratch number one. And number two, remember when is now the mount of Diego de Gavea. And number five, big eyed girl, take the tongue tie off. No tongue tie for that one. I found, although this field was small, trappy. <coughs> Yeah, very trappy, Nico. And I was actually quite strong on, on Remember When. I yeah. really thought this filly was the right one. 
this is where my, my card starts going haywire now. Because, um, you know, that run behind Bella Chica in that listed event on the 6th of November, that was a very strong race. You have horses like Aga, who came through and won. Um, Aga Hitu came through and won on uh, Thursday. Yeah. Um, who runs behind Master Archie, Faraway Winter. Big runner. She was my strong first selection. But now that she's got the full 50, uh, 58 and a half, not so strong. And I think Moringo, I might be leaning towards Moringo, even though half a kilogram worse off with Sheldon. Uh, Sheldon's a big runner again, of course. And mm. then um, Big Eyed Girl and Goliath Heron. Remember when, oh, I'm still going to tip her in my top three, but now it's between two, three, four, five, six, and any one of those can win. I don't yeah. know which order to go. Yeah, they go, our hardy does. Wait for them. Yeah, they ah. come. Yeah, they, yeah they come. They're going to rest up on the roof here. Um, horrible you know, thing. Maybe maybe because of Gabriel taking the one and a half off Sheldon. That was a very clever move by yeah. him. I think Maybe Sheldon that, might be the right one again. I think there's little, little to choose between them. But the interesting fact, as you mentioned, was the removal of the tongue-tied, big-eyed girl uh, because yeah. she's been threatening. And uh, that run behind Epica was really good. Um, Very good I think the removal of that tongue-tied might have a, uh, the last say in this race. And I'd be prepared mm -hmm. to put that one too. I don't like this race. Um, cool. And and as you say, with Saseba riding, remember when it might have made it a bit easier for us to have chosen it, but now yeah. and it doesn't get the four kilos on, gets the senior rider and Diego de Gavir, um, I think any one of those could win that you mentioned. Remember when Agreed. Sheldon, Big Eyed Girl, Marengo, that one, uh, please put in uh, a few more than normal there. Race six yeah. runs at quarter to three. Yeah. It's a merit trade at 80 handicap. It's a thousand meter trip race number six. Um, here you can scratch numbers eight, Captain Dizzy, and eleven, Arbitrator. Um, I'm just seeing now that Arbitrator and Captain Dizzy are both out in race six. Number three, Bronco Blitz is now the mount of Randall Simons, and those are the changes there. Now, Captain Dizzy, uh, the money was coming strongly for it: twelves, eights, sevens, fours, and then all of a sudden. At um, half past six this morning, after all this betting movement has taken place, abscess or four. Oh, shame. So, shame, yeah. Shame for whoever. But anyway, yeah. um, let's have a look at it without Captain Dizzy, an arbitrator, out the race. What are you thinking? Um, I quite like Stormy Seas, Nico, not the, for the first time. If we, I studied this race and went round and round and round, Stormy Seas comes into this quite nicely weighted, holds a few at the weights, has one course and distance. Yeah. Rachel with that one and a half kilograms off. Um, there's so many form lines, just to mention one, if you go back to the Spielberg form line, was one and a quarter lengths behind Spielberg, three and a half kilograms better off. Um, quite a few of them are worse off with Stormy Seas. For me, Stormy Seas is the horse to beat. Bronco Blitz, Fanny Bronkost. Um, we haven't got a rider for that one, do we? Number three, Bronco Blitz. Uh, Randall Simons now rides. Oh, uh, thank you. You did say that. Randall Simons. So, yeah. so now carrying 60 and a half, that's put us in a whole different um, kettle of fish. I mean, well held by Stormy Seas, you'd think now at the weights, but a uh, very good one last time. Number four, Double Magic. Nico, here's my interesting running house. See, it's come from into six to one. This was 10 to one, Double Magic. If you go back to that second bind successful secret and the win uh, when beating Alela Blur, that, that time, look at that time then, a 55.85 successful secret. Mm. Also, on a collateral form line through Samuel Salt, Double Magic has to have a chance here as well. I do want to mention Spielberg. I do want to mention um, Cool Winter on best. And then both number one and number two, here comes the rain and number 11. But we can't tip them all 11 scratch, which is good. Thank you. That actually helps. Stormy yeah. Seas, for me, from probably Double Magic. Yeah, we've been for Stormy Seas a number of times, and uh, I like mm. sticking with horses on this channel. And uh, I think that Rachel Venneker, who's never ridden it before, is going to ride it pretty well. So mm. I am prepared to take a gamble on on that Stormy Seas will be your rover here. Well, it is your rover, as you it mentioned. Is. But I think Stormy Seas comes into it looking pretty well with that one and a half kilos off, comes in with just 54 and a half kilos. The one horse I did want to mention was number two, Here Comes the Rain. Yeah, um, for our good friend, uh, Corey and Emmy Lensley, uh, Gabriel Peterson rides. I thought last time out, I called it last time out, and I was really happy with the way that it ran uh, because it's a newcomer to the province, and um, I think it really liked its last run. 
I see it was reported mm. coughing after, which isn't good news. But um, it's not drawn the best at two. Um, we tend to think, I mean, last week when we worked together, Lyle, um, those draws on Summer Cup Day up the straight were really high up the straight. Yes, um, they were. So we'll have to have a look at that today. But I, I gave the two at uh, 12 and a half to find a chance. Here comes the rain. But that betting might be adjusted because of that scratching of Captain Dizzy. Everyone was on that. And it's got an abscess, as I'm sure some of the people in <clears throat> the um, 12 to 1 might have as well today. Bit of an abscess. Nico, one more thing. I just want to talk day. about one yeah. more thing about this. I did, a, I did a lot of work in this race. And on the, on the Samuel Salt formula, and I know I've just mentioned this, but I mentioned it again. Yes. This double magic comes into the race because... Double Magic was three and a half lengths behind Samuel Salt, giving yes. three kilograms. Yeah. Giving three. All the other horses in this race have been beaten by Samuel Salt, re um, receiving weight. Yeah. So I do think that Double Magic could be a little bit it's of a just the fitness, mention, mention It's it. just the fitness and, and the fact that um, it's ex-Paul Peter, and we know the stats of that first run after ex-Paul Peter. They're not good. Um, you make a good point. You know, so I'm just a bit wary. And, you know, the, the, that's the stable companion we're talking about to Here Comes the Rain. I find much more uh, um, value here at 12 and a half than I do at sixes. But Corey okay. Lindsley, Point you mate. know him as well as I do. He's very forward. Um, he'll yeah. tell you what the scenario is there. Give you down. We'll try and find him. On that, yeah. Okay. Okay, gotcha. race seven is off at 20 past three. It's a Phillies and Mayor 72 divided handicap. It's over 1,600 meters. Scratch number two, simple, simple, who I, I actually kind of liked. Uh, today mm. in a forward race, but that's not going to run. So that's another Sasebo ride that's not going to happen today. That's the only change. Um, yeah, let's have a look at this race. See quite a bit of money around for number seven, Barmaid, which is coming from 14 to 1 to 8 to 1. Chase Morjan rides for the Burtis Fosslu Yard. Um, what do you think of this race? Nick, I quite like number six, Defender of Rights. Randall Simons was too pedigree. That yeah. third behind Rennie last time, you know, very nice run. Asia Pambele has come through and won this week from that form line. If we go to that fantasy flower form line, was one and a half lengths behind Angel's Wishes, three kilograms better off. I think she's nicely weighted here. I think Defender of Rights is a big, big runner here. Number one, Erin Garia, daughter of William Longsword. She's coming out of two grade threes. And if she reproduces that penultimate, well, she'll win this race because she beat horses like Under Your Spell and Feather Boa on that Miss Daisy run there. So there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Give me a shot was just in front of her that came out and won a game. So Berengari brings top, top form here. Um, just the, the weight, of course. So for me, it's six from one, Nico. And then I will put eight, nine, and three in. I think they've got small, small chances. But I like six and one. Hardy does. What's happening? Yeah, I'm looking at them. You can hear them there. I don't know what they're cackling on about. But, but this Pascal Samurai, I mean, this horse, incredible. Uh, Thackeray has gone to the front and they haven't sniffed it in its last yep. two. Um, its Amazing. rating has gone up another three points. It went up nine points. It's still one. It's gone up another three. Um, Correct. It's going to go to the front, but it's dangerous. But I, I don't think it can win three in a row. That's my personal. Me neither, point. Nico. And the, the reason I'm leaving out of my top three is it, it's been a turfing team ten times for not even a place. Yeah. Not one place. That's on so, the on the stand side track. Yeah. Okay. You bring yeah, up a very yeah. good point, and, and and you back it up yeah. with a great uh, argument too. Defender yeah. rights, I'm I'm willing to accept is it would be the horse that they've all got to beat. Yeah. He's uh, she's a three to one. Uh, she like the 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 track. And the trip here, mm. definitely. I'd see her only um, race over this course and distance was a win. Um, Correct. Was back when she won her maiden on the 27th of February. Oh, sorry, sorry. And she was yes. full of running that day. So I'm prepared to say that uh, she is the horse to beat here. Defender of rights, yep. race number seven. Let's go to All race right. eight. Uh, the penultimate uh, race eight is off at five to four this afternoon. The Phillies and Mares 93 divided handicap. In this race, no scratchings in race eight. Number seven, Little Mary Sunshine, apprentice uh, MK Kacheri now rides. So instead of getting the four off, gets two and a half off. It's not the worst result mm -hmm. for Little mm -hmm. Mary Sunshine, who gets two and a half kilos off that. And uh, number seven, uh, Little Mary Sunshine's got blinkers on for the first time today. Now, provided she doesn't pull, she's got to be one of the runners uh, that's got a chance here. Yeah? I'm glad you've said that, Nico. She's actually my first selection. Again, I, I went through this race, had a look at it, and then changed my mind in the end with Little Mary Sunshine. Let me give you the very short story here. 
Little Mary Sunshine, she's been drawn 7 of 14, 10 of 13, 12 of 12. She's taken on Canadian Summer, Miss Daisy, Pascal Samurai, etc. We've got strange music coming out to win. Behind her on the Miss Daisy form line, she had horses like Captain Pig and Typeset. And then I want to mention this, Nico. On the, on the run behind Miss Daisy, we take a horse like Wakanda. I went into this in great details. Wakanda ran four and a half lengths behind Miss Daisy at level weights. She's got 56 and a half kilograms. Number seven, Little Mary Sunshine, ran five and a half lengths behind Miss Daisy at level weights. She's got 51 and a half. So at the weights, if this, I don't know how this works, if it doesn't work, but for me, seven, eight, six, five, in that order, Nick. Okay, seven, eight, six, and five. You're going with Little Mary Sunshine. She's not drawn the best, though, which is against her no. again today. Seven out of Better nine. than usual, though. Better yeah. than usual, Nick. <laughs> Look, um, yeah, I hear what you're saying. I'm just a bit concerned about the blinkers, the addition of the blinkers. I, You know, it, it could well work, um, but yeah. it might have, might have the opposite effect. So there is a bit of risk and unknown quantity there, but I take your point. The horse I wanted to really ask you on here is uh, a horse that you've not mentioned is number three, Emerald Princess. Uh, yes. Because of the Stratum factor, we know that Stratum Road, I uh, see a Pambile for Sean Terry to a win. Should this horse not be included today? I mean, I don't know how it comes out on the form lines, but certainly I'm thinking the step up and trip might well um, add a bit of spice to Emerald Princess's run. What do you think? Yeah, like you said, Nick, Emerald Princess with striker aboard must have a chance. But, you know, when I looked at the race, the horse like Dancing um, Arabian on, on that Princess Philippa form line yes. um, holds Emerald Princess has, and also has horse like Golden Aspen behind her. Yeah. And Golden Aspen beats Emerald Princess. So, yeah, yes. with pure aboard, yeah, you, anything can win. But I thought um, Dancing Arabian, although up in class, was actually a really big runner. I'm okay, looking so, into the price. So, yeah, so, so, okay, so one. in order of preference there, what are your numbers? Seven, eight, six, five, and then only number three. Okay, seven, eight, six, five, and three. So that is a wide open race. Uh, we're thinking in the eighth, yeah. uh, the penultimate. Let's go to the last of the day. I'll have to see whether we can get to that last race, but uh, I can't see where, what's happening with my computer. So let's go to that ninth race. Um, Scratch is number eight here, Musical Kiss. You can take out number eight. And uh, number nine, Dark Tide is now the amount of chase. Mourjan, and then number three, Rio's Kiss, um, has steel shoes, no alamites. Mm. Here it is. Okay, here it How's is. How's our betting? Here's the betting. Do you quite like In the Ether? Now, I know you like that because you, you put yes. it as a banker in the PA. I can tell you that last time out, it was all over the place in the race. Couldn't find ways through... Certainly was an eye-catching run by running third. Um, it just was bumped all over the place and had a real rough race. Yeah, well, you know, Nico, before the, the um, scratching of Siena Sosibo, I was on dark tide at the weights. It was phenomenal. Yeah. But now that Siena's off and it's a full 53 and a half, Chase is fantastic. But at the weights now, number four in the ether. Escavel was in front of in the ether, came out and won on Thursday. I like the way that uh, she's running. I know she's drawn two. But Pilisande knows her well, and for me, she and she holds quite a few horses in this race. So in the ether, from number nine, we'll still include her. That was a good run last time. And then horses like number seven, Nick. I want you to get your thoughts on number seven here. Earl of Cardigan. Wow, there are a lot of weight turnarounds here. On the Corvette Captain form line, she's waited to beat Whiskey Business. On the Bronco Blitz, Brits, uh, Bronco Blitz form line, she's waited to beat in the ether. And then on the Ramachandani Road, she's waited to get closer to in the ether. So mm. Earl of Cardigan's a bit of a sneaker, and then Irrevocable Dream as well um, could get a bit closer to number nine, but theoretically held by number four. So I kept on coming back to number four, Nico, after yeah. that long story I'm giving you. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, because I saw the race last time out and I saw what transpired within the ether, provided she gets a clear passage this time, she's not drawn the best of two. It's no. not the biggest of fields with 10 runners, but I thought this race would behave itself. So I thought four and nine, I thought those two that you mentioned. Yeah. I did give a chance to the, the six irrevocable dream. I thought that had a chance too. And like you say, I think Earl of Cardigan will be somewhere on the premises, but I don't think it's going to be out the ordinary result here in the last of the day. I think it will be. I wouldn't think so, no. Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. So that wraps up our discussion on today. As I said, we've done a take of it to place accumulator, which will be on the program a bit later on. Lyle, before you go, I don't know if you've looked at the Cape Town card, but it really is a storming day. Obviously, 
a little bit of a dampener put on by the scratching of Jet Dark. Mm. Uh, Richard Faree didn't ride yesterday because he um, was aboard Jet Dark when it had that slight training accident. Stumbled, apparently. Um, it grazed itself, so it was on medication. So that's not running today. Richard, I think, was on medication as well, um, you know, because he was aboard it when it, when it uh, fell at work or stumbled at work. So, so he'll, he'll hopefully be back today. But your thoughts on the Cape Town program? Uh, comedy ding the Cape Phillies guineas. Do you have any strong thoughts on those? I only have one strong thought today. I think uh, the people's race summer cups over. I think the people's horse is going to win today. I think comedy ding is a banker. I think comedy ding will win, and hopefully, a few people can catch fix it. Yeah, strong today on comedy ding. Okay, yeah, I echo that. I think I'm very strong on comedy ding. I'm very interested to see how the Port Elizabeth horse affairs in the Cape Phillies mm. guineas peach daiquiri. Because I called yes. it a, a few weeks ago when it won. I was really, really excited with what I saw. So let's see how she shapes up in that big race today. And I, I quite also fancy um, uh, Char Bella and uh, that uh, Bassos Golden Hostess. I see they've added, added blinkers oh, on yes. Golden Hostess. I think might be a better proposition. Anyway, it's all in the melting pot, as they say. Four minutes of show left, and that's our time to leave you. Lyle, thanks very much for the input today. Thank you. We'll speak to you again next week. Have a great weekend, and thanks for all the uh, efforts and the studying put in. Thanks, Nico. See you later. Bye-bye.